So, I'm going to be speaking to you this evening about unshredding secret documents. It's the second to last talk, so we'll be able to keep this entertaining and snappy. Cool. So, first things first, I'm going to take you on my personal journey down the unshredding rabbit hole. I want to go through the motivation and the history of paper shredding and reconstruction, and I want to talk a little bit about practical application of techniques. So, my journey into the world of document reconstruction started where many good things start, at a Chikon, specifically the 2019 Chikon CTF. One of the CTF's challenges was a shredded image containing the flag, and I wanted to write an algorithm that would automatically put the images together. In true hacker spirit, this was not the most straightforward way of reassembling the images. The text size was large, there wasn't much text, and it was reasonably easy to reconstruct using an image editor. For one of the flags, the shredded pieces were in order, so just looking at them in Windows Explorer gave you a pretty clear idea of what the text was. So, now I had a problem that was completely solvable manually, either using Windows Explorer or an image editor. The only sensible option was to spend a couple of hours writing an algorithm to do it for me. So, the first step of the process is to make it binary. So that's where we take anything darker than pure white and we convert it to black. This includes anti-aliasing, those soft grey pixels that are used to make the corners of letters softer. That meant when it came time to match the edges of a shredded document, any letter that started on one shred, even if it was just a light pixel of anti-aliasing, would hint that it leaked to another. The next job is to go through and compare the edges of the shreds. There's lots of ways to match edges. But generally, matching points are identified on each edge, and the system attempts to link the start of one letter on one side to its continuation on another matching edge. In this case, we took a one pixel wide column of the left and right edges and used that for comparison. But the version I wrote that day, I simply counted the number of pixels on each edge. So I matched in the edge that had the closest number of pixels. Couldn't, couldn't be simpler. So in this example, shred one has six pixels on the right, six black pixels, and shred two has six black pixels on the left, that's a match. That's close enough. So this algorithm worked well enough for large letters and lots of space. I'd later learned that we would use com we normally compare neighborhoods of pixels, and this is especially important as the text density goes up, and we have smaller fonts and less white space. My simple algorithm would have lots and lots of edges with similar number of pixels with denser text and more shreds. And voila, we had a reconstruction. Sorry about the spoilers for the 2019 Chicon CTF. So. After high-fiving myself, I later went on to learn that the reconstruction of documents in the real world is often not so simple. Images can be noisy, so we often need to remove noise or differences due to light or shadow. Narrow pieces of paper, when cut, curve like human hairs, so we can't assume that they're perfect rectangles. We instead find the corners and draw a bounding box around them. Now we have a rectangle, we need to correct the skew that it might have, and after we've done that, we need to work out which way it goes up. I was surprised to find, especially in this field, that there's a near 100% accurate algorithm for deciding which way a piece of English text goes up. So we got that part automated for us. Lastly, we need to cluster all of the shredded pieces into the documents that we believe they might come from. Having a real human correct the results at each step also substantially improves the results. Generally, automatic reconstruction doesn't produce a perfect image first time. So, we have the history of shredding. After a deep diving into the technical details of document reconstruction, I was interested to learn where document shredding all began. If you read my talk summary, you might have some ideas about the type of devices that were used historically to destroy documents. And because we can't talk about document reconstruction without talking about document creation and destruction first, let's dive in. And just so you know, we're going way back. So, invention of paper, 4000 BC. To make sure we've got the complete history of paper shredding covered, we've first got to go back to the creation of paper in ancient Egypt. Not long after paper was invented, did man make a mistake so embarrassing that he felt the need to shred it into thousands of little pieces. The previous mediums for writing, like clay tablets and wall painting, didn't really allow such easy destruction, but it's fair to say paper changed everything. So about 6,000 years later, it's short skip there. Don't think anything interesting happened in the intervening time. In the fairy tale land of Germany, a man called Adolf is looking around his kitchen for something to destroy documents he didn't want other people reading. Just to clarify, this man is Adolf Erhinger, and he's looking for a device to shred his anti-Nazi propaganda. While the Nazis are really big fans of document shredders, they were actually created to protect against them. So, for those who read the talk summary, any guesses on which kitchen devices make good document shredders? So is there a damn good start? Any others? That's actually really kind of... <laughs> 
<laughs> That's not in my talk, but it should be. Your waste disposal. Those 1935 waste disposals, huh? Very good. Is it daily? Yeah. Yeah, just fire, fire's pretty good. But, yeah. Anyway, so there are some ideas. Let's have a look through. So here are a picture of an expensive pair of shredder scissors. These are used for manual document destruction in an office environment. Um, they may look very familiar to anyone who's spent too much time in the kitchen, and a quick Google search finds the following. These are herb shears. They cost $14, not $200. And while they aren't as classy and business-like in green as they were in black, they are an option for your manual destruction needs. But Herr Ehinger had his eyes fixed on a different kitchen device. This is a trusty pasta maker. The trusty pasta maker doesn't just repeatedly flatten delicious carbs. It also cuts them into wide or narrow strips. Otherwise, you just have lasagna sheets and sadness. Not, after, not long after that, the bank interns, who I imagine had super ripped arms from hours and hours of winding a pasta maker to destroy documents, were given motorized pasta makers to get through the documents a little faster. And this was the birth of the modern shredder. The next step in the evolution of the paper shredder was in 1959, that same company that made the original paper shredder made the crosscut shredder, resulting in smaller pieces that were much more challenging to put together, and resulting in me spending a very long time putting tiny pieces of paper on a scanner bed. Not a fan. So, finally, we get to the ultimate evolution, just after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the industrial shredder. Now we could shred everything and anything, and we'd leave no more embarrassing evidence of anything ever again. Well, until the internet came around, and that was a whole new can of worms. So, what's our motivation? This is a lot of work reconstructing these documents, and why is it such a good candidate for automation? Often documents that we shred contain valuable information, from state secrets to penetration test results. And manual reconstruction takes way too long. This is a single A4 page, cross-cut with shreds that are just over an inch. But wait, there's more. It takes over two pages to scan all the pieces, and that's ignoring all that I threw out, a large number of blanks while I was arranging them. Just putting the pieces on a scanner and while the text facing down takes a surprisingly long amount of time. Some innovations have reduced this time, but it's still a significant amount of manual labor, especially when compared with how quick it can be to assemble documents that are only cut into strips. You'd need the dexterity of an Iranian carpet weaver to do that quickly. And speaking of which, who's keen for story time? There we go, right time for stories. So, after the Iranian Revolution in 1979, the US Embassy in Tehran was taken over. The Iranians were dismayed to find that US government had shredded all of its important documents, so they enlisted 20 carpet weavers who worked for six years to reconstruct 2,300 documents. Let's be clear about how fast that is. That's each carpet weaver managed to reconstruct 19 documents per year. It can't be overstated what an immense and near impossible task it is for humans to reconstruct very, very narrow vertical shreds, two millimeters, these ones, that the US used at the time. After these were reconstructed, they released a series of books called Documents from the US Espionage Den. The US government was very embarrassed and immediately afterwards improved its shredding techniques, adding pulverizing, pulping, and chemical decomposition to the process. One of the next big public steps in document reconstruction began in 2003. The Stasi, East Germany's secret police threw millions of shreds of paper into its garbage bags during the regime's final days in 1989. It took 36 people six years to reconstruct 300 of the 16,000 bags by hand. And often sorting through these bags, they would find rubbish and apple cores and all sorts. It's a hell of a task, apparently. Okay, so first, are there any German speakers in the audience? Okay, that's more than I was expecting. So good, I'm going to walk the tightrope of pronouncing the word on screen with my limited German. If I get it wrong, like true Germans, I expect your frank and immediate feedback. So, this is the Stasi Schnitzel Maschine. Okay, good, good, we got it. It was de developed by Fraunhofer IPK. The machine had a number of improvements. And you'll remember how earlier I spent quite a bit of time shuffling cross-cut pieces on a scanner. The Germans included a double scanner with, with scans on both sides. So it keeps the side that has text on and the side that doesn't is discarded. Still. Even this machine was overwhelmed by the complexity of reconstructing these documents, only managing to reconstruct around 23 bags or 91,000 pages out of that small mountain. At least, the name is both pragmatic and a lot of fun to say, so a solid $10 million investment there. The next development was on October 27, 2011. DARPA issued a $50,000 challenge for the first team to be able to reconstruct a series of five very challenging documents. The challenge had a tight deadline of December 4th that same year, and the motivation here was to encourage innovation and improve the state of the art around document shredding. On the left here you can see the original document, and on the right, 
Those are the shredded pieces the participants were provided with. It's important to highlight that in many cases when we're reconstructing documents, we're looking to answer specific questions. The DARPA challenge acknowledged this and asked for specific questions to be answered using reconstructed documents. This means that we're often even reconstructing a frag fragment of a document can provide us with the answer that we're looking for. In just three days before the cutoff date, an eight-person team of computer vision experts called All Your Shreds Are Belong to US submitted the winning solution to all five problems. It's estimated they took 600 hours of work and custom computer vision scripts to suggest matches for human confirmation. To my knowledge, there's no public reconstruction technology that could have handled these documents, and the number of challenges required, both a significant amount of automation, but also human knowledge and interpretation to reconstruct. Challenges like this, along with research papers, are significantly moving forward to the state of the art. So, let's get into practical advice. What are practical advice when we give around document reconstruction? During re document reconstruction, technology generally appears to be private and closed source. The one popular commercial solution I found is called Unshredder. So I downloaded the demo of this software and found that it's entirely for manual document reconstruction. All of the steps that I highlight earlier have to be done in hand in a paint-like program. This is good for wide shreds, but for a lot of the things we see today, it's not very useful. In terms of open source, the internet is absolutely flooded with irresponsible pet project reconstruction programs like mine. They absolutely don't work in the real world, with one small exception. In 2013, Rasmin Ranka released a thesis on unshredding documents. It's up on GitHub, including the Python source code for each step with properly robust algorithms. If I needed a serious automated document reconstruction tool, this is the first place I would look. So, what should we look for in a shredder? The general guidelines are that it, uh, you want a cross-cut shredder and the narrow and shorter the shreds are the better. Both the NZ ISM and Protective Security provide guidelines on what level of shredding is needed based on how confidential what you have is. For something like a 4mm by 28mm cross-cut shredder, they're available for about just north of $100, and to go down to a cheap 2 by 12 mil cross-cut shredder to be the Protective Security Grade 3 recommendation, you're looking for about 300 You can add additional complexity cheaply by being kind of a pain in the ass. Some shredders go into water or chemical solutions that makes reconstruction nearly impossible, while other countries burn shredder remains to increase the difficulty of document reconstruction. To my surprise, burning documents is often not enough by itself. Sometimes documents can be pulled back, even when they're burned. So, what's the future of unshredding? Since the DARPA challenge, the focus has generally been on improvement of algorithms at each stage of the process, such as using optical character recognition to aid reconstruction. In the past 10 years, there have been a large number of papers published, each building on the previous ones to improve this process. I was pleasantly surprised to see that in January of this year, there was a paper published that uses machine learning to dramatically speed up the reconstruction process. Unshredding is still an active area of research, and I've seen research from Brazil, Greece, UK, and China being published publicly. Thank you very much for your time.